Pilot Mountain, up on Pilot Mountain State Park in North Carolina. As I was driving through West Virginia last night in Virginia, I was listening to a little John Denver, a little sunshine on my shoulders. Sometimes you just got to enjoy what's around you, you know? This is gorgeous. I love this place. I was just reading some history about the settlers that came through here. This mountain, Pilot Mountain, was used by uh, wagon trains as a landmark. Pretty cool. It's also, this valley down here is uh, known as the Cradle of Civilization for the Carolinas. There's uh, remains of Indians from over 12,000 years ago. Pretty cool stuff. As John Denver said, if I could give you a day, I'd give you a day just like today. Happy Friday, guys. Anaerobic chunks in circuit to near metabolic threshold to meet anaerobic goal. We live it. <laughs> all right. If you are all back on the line, look left, left, look right. Make sure everybody's got eyes and ears. Good, good. Go ahead, draw, load, and make ready. If your gun is needing to be put back in battery, load correctly. I would verify the condition of the weapon before you come back to the holster. That's a good time for a press check during that admin load, right? Seat, lock, tug, cycle. Press check, good, I like it. Little tappy tap on the slide. Thumb check and reholster it up. Beautiful. All right, same thing. I'm going to vary up the amount of shots. Immerse yourself mentally. If we need to talk about that over lunch, we will. Two shots. So I'm purposeful in my presentation. So one of you can give the command to go ahead and fire. Go. All right, so because this is not a speed drill, I've got my grip. I join up, press out, I find the front side, I get the slack out of the trick. Slowly, 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 I the slack out. I see all your muscled up, so you're squeezing good, Devin. Let me see what you got. Push your gun out in front of you once. Squeeze. Set gun up. I'm loading here. Not loading here. This is how thugs load guns. This is going to be your command to shoot. Got it? The goal is the tiniest group possible. So do what's required to make that happen. If you're doing the same thing each time, you will get the same result. This is something, you know, like you got to work on. You definitely, you did markedly better than when you started. Part of that's just nerves. You got any gear scoop? Go ahead. I don't hear you. Don't be willy-nilly about this, boys. You're, you, are, you are right now training to shoot a human subject. A human being that has committed some type of felonious action against you that you needed to shoot them to save the life or limb of yourself or another human being. Get that second sight picture, a second sight picture, or subsequent sight picture, because you may have to end up firing more than one shot. Now we're gonna fire two. If your gun goes empty, reload it and finish. So if you only fire one, make it work and get the second shot into the target. Yeah. Three sight pictures now, right? Right. Woo! Now we're going to start breathing. Give it to me again. See 
understand, I'm not making a smart ass joke here. Force air into your lungs. You are now training for a very stressful situation. They call it combat breathing. Some people call it yoga breathing. Same thing, you're oxygenating your bloodstream. So after you do these actions, take a couple deep inhalations through your nose. It's a good practice. Three shots. It's not cardboard anymore. If I'm still assessing, boom, boom, whether or not I need to shoot somebody, what should I be looking at? The hand. Target. Yeah, I should be looking at whatever I'm aiming at, right? And you said the ground, right? Because... Hands. What's that? Hands. Hands, okay. Well, hands are good. You were talking more specifically. What I was driving at is you should be focused on that threat. Don't draw your gun in. Don't swivel your head around. This, this looking around to see what's around you doesn't happen until you've totally secured whatever you just apply deadly force to. If we decide that we can just start looking about or, or shifting our gaze, then we better well know that whatever we just apply deadly force to is stopped. That might not be a person. It could be a pack of coyotes. It could be the neighbor's rabid pit bull, you know? Pay attention, immerse yourself. This is not, I don't want you guys to get into like movements where it's like A, B, C, D, E, F, G, done. It needs to be you thinking your way through a problem. Ready? Three shots. How many sight pictures? Four. 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 Did I hit? Did it work? Does this thing need to be shot again? Safely reholster. Make sure that you guys are keeping that finger way off the trigger. Always reholster slow too, fellas. No reason to speed reholster. Each time that you touch that gun, what? Learn something. Learn something. What'd you just learn? Not from me, what did you teach yourself? I don't have the answer, no reason to answer that. There's always something, man. There's always something if you look. Okay, I'm gonna recap the sight gear super, super quick. You guys all drive a manual or a motorcycle or something? Yep, first, second, third. So kind of the same thing. You are learning to transition. These are not hard lines either. This drill we're about to do is really good at helping you define what level of, of refinement you use. So we're going to come back up. This uh, small box is your target, not the whole head. See that small box? You guys all see it? Yep. Come on up to the front line. This is the Mozambique drill. At lunch, I'll tell you what, what, where that even came from. So I showed you guys two, then one, right? Mm -hmm. The point is not two then one. The point is that you are being forced to transition from one sight picture to the other. Eyes and ears. Watch me again, please. Step forward if you want. You can step forward. I'm not going to go left and right. So you guys are going to load, make ready, come back to your holster. You're going to draw, press out. Come back to the holster. Draw. Did I hit? Did it work? Does he need me to shoot him again? Nope. It's good. Mentally, stay in the game. You gotta slow down to get that faster one. These two shots, you guys are all doing good at shooting quickly. So, rip those two shots. If you can't keep them in the paper, slow down. If you're keeping them like a dime size, go faster. Then slow down and make that tiny head box shot. Ready? Ready? ready. Load and make ready. Come back to the holster if you have not already done so. Look left, left, look right. Make sure everybody's eyes and ears are on because we care about each other. We love each other. And...
Did everybody get their two shots in paper nice and quick? Yep. Did everybody miss or hit the head box? Miss. Line yeah. counts. Line counts. Not line counts. Line counts. counts. All right. We're going to do it again. Do what's required to get the hit. down. What do we just cover? What do we cover? Front sight, right? Grip is nice. Slack out. Smoothly, smoothly, gently, gently to the rear and the gun goes off. Let's try it again. The whole point is that you are learning to slow down. Watch me again, boys. Watch me again. Somebody call it. You need to shoot him again. Hold. Oh, oh, oh. Three and two. Kind of shoots a little bit to the left. Yeah. I wonder if you need to drift that sight a touch. When we shoot, rhythm is nice because our brain works good with rhythm, you know? Clapping. Rhythm changes at distance. You don't have to, but if you're trying to still get good hits, you may have to slow that rhythm down. So we're going to really quick just work on some rhythm drill. We're going to start out, and you guys are going to count. One, two, three, four, five. So you have the gun out, you're going to go. One, two, three, four, five. We're going to do it a few times. Ultimately, it should sound like You got it? All seven of you are going to shoot simultaneously. Make sense? So, you're like, what does that have to do with anything? A couple things. One is learning, your, we're gonna speed up and slow down. One is developing that rhythm, which makes you shoot smoother and more fluid. We're gonna change that rhythm at distance, but it also is gonna make you guys pay attention to what's going on around you. So, eyes and ears. Let me hear it. One, One two. two. Three, four, five. Try it again. One, One two, three, four, five. On the whistle. We're going to now speed it up to one, two, three, four, five. Count. Let me hear it. One, two, three, four, five. Do it again. One, one, two, three, four, five. Do it again. Talk like you're men. One, one two, two, three, four, five. five. Again. One, one two, two, three, three four, four, five. five. And... Now we're going to run to the ragged edge. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Let me hear it. One, two, three, four, five. Again. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, one, two three, three, four, five. five. One, two, three, four, five. Is that, that's probably going to be the edge of what you boys can, can squeeze the trigger at. Let's hear it. One, one, two, two, three, 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 four, five. five. One, two, three, four, 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 five. Ready and fire. Got ammo already? Why is shooting smoothly important? You guys ever try to shoot fast and it goes boom, boom, <laughs> boom? Because you didn't reset correctly, you know what I mean? Like you didn't let the trigger out far enough and you thought that you reset, but you didn't. So then, like the shot cadence goes, ba -ba, ba -do, ba -ba -do, ba -ba. like, you know, jazz instead of like a smooth metronome, right? That is the most efficient way to get the bullets into the target, depending on whatever is, is, is the requirement, whatever you're trying to do, five rounds, ten rounds, two rounds. Draw. Be at the 
low ready. This is low ready, guys. So this is like pressed ready, low ready. I'm, I'm ready, low ready. This is not low ready. Low ready is you're just dropping the gun below your sight line. Okay? You're gonna give me six shots from low ready on the beat. Here we go. This is as fast as you can rip them out of the gun and kill. From low red. Here we go. Ready? Uh -oh. Six shots, one, six, oh. Uh, your split times were about two, two. Okay? That's that's good. One, four, oh. Got the fastest? Split time, the fastest split time you had was 1.8. All right. So all of those times, those were all great. That's about, like 2.0 is about what the average human fingers is. Good stuff. Shot accountability and the ability to apply a rapid amount of shots is what stops human threats. Could be one shot, it could be five. This is why we want to keep our eyes and ears open and be paying attention to what's happening. We don't want to get so rigid that's like, there's not, this isn't a recipe where if I want to stop said threat, I, I open up a recipe book and it's like, okay, he gets five rounds, he gets six. We talked about this earlier, right? You need to be able to take in info. That's fun to do that. The reason that we do that, though, is not just to dump a bag and see how fast we can do it. Because there's a point, if you apply that many rounds to this target, and it's a humanoid target, what probably will happen? Stop, target. Stop, it's going to, right, or move. So if you get fixated on just like being a locked platform where you're just, uh, uh, you got to be able to track and move. So I've got a balloon that I'm going to tie to your ankle, and you're going to run. <laughs> okay, it. Back to the holster. Hey guys, look at me, don't move, just look back at me. If you're having to use your hand to reholster, don't do it. Come to here. So if you gotta clear the cover garment, clear it, come to here with it, hold it. Come back in, thumb check. You guys know how to thumb check? Yes, yes every one of you? Yes. Thumb check, come in, and then recover. If you don't have a cover garment, pretend that you're uncovering. Don't. Uh, don't have your hand down by that holster. Point your imaginary finger gun at me. At me, okay? So this will change as I move down the line here. So we see these drills, right, where we move the range disco, you know? Are you having a hard time tracking me? No. Not at all, right? Even if I exploded, you can keep up with me. All of you? Yeah. Yep. As, as I'm farther away, like for you, I'm, you're just doing like this, right? It's the slightest. As we're close, for me to move, it creates some challenge for you. Why are we moving? Oftentimes we think, we're moving so they can't shoot us. Well, point your finger at me one more time. Any one of you guys could hit me, stepping side to side. I, I'd watch to shoot enough that you'd hit me. We're trying to disrupt the thought process, the action being applied to us. So, that little bit of movement, now you have to reorient. You guys have all heard of the OODA loop? Yes? Yes, uh, yes. Observe, orient, decide, and act. This is created by an Air Force pilot. It was his way of instructing during dogfight. Observe, orient, decide, and act. Google it later. But uh, basically, you have to observe something happening. You have to orientate to it. You have to decide what you're going to do. And then act on it. We all do this, right? The trick is, 
how far can you compress that? That's what all of this is for. You're creating a smaller decision window for you. For example, you and I don't know each other. If I walk up to you in the grocery store, pull out the kernel and shove it in your gut, do you need to think about an appropriate response? Like, should I shoot this dude? Or like, no, that's like a given, right? So your response should be immediate action. Now, in this close quarter gunfight, we're talking fractions of seconds, anything you can do to buy yourself time. If I've already have a gun pointed at me, me trying to draw on that is a very terrible thing, but sometimes this is a sandwich. You know, like, you've all heard to say you can't draw on a drawn gun. What if I have to? What if I have no choice? It's gonna lay there and let you murder me? You know, that, that's like the story I told you of Jerry. You have to be able to deal with that. So. Part of that movement is more than getting out of the way of the muzzle. It is you causing that opponent to have to reorient. It. And it's not just a physical compass heading, it's mentally. You know, this guy's moved. You guys uh, ever done any research on how criminals pick victims? Yeah. So, you know, somebody that looks like walking through the bus station you know this is pretty pretty aimless mindless type of behavior you could probably tell if somebody has their shoulders slumped forward lift that up you can see my face you know you just this is like a dejected kind of uh downer unaware type of a person right my shoulders are back and i'm not being a weirdo but i'm paying attention where's my oh oh there's the train people i'm going to and i'm paying attention to what's going on it's totally different a totally different uh, objective as you are going about your day. You're the bad guy, I'm the good guy. You're shooting me. And, and, uh, so I don't like this, so I reorient. And all of a sudden, even in your brain, that little bit is like, oh, this guy kind of knows more than I thought. You know what I mean? It's not, it's no longer, I'm just gonna roll this dude and take his So there's a, there's a much compounded uh, information telling you that so you understand it's not you're not getting out of the way of a bullet I mean, if, I, if I could sit here and go like this and tell you to shoot you guys would track and hit it you are you are screwing up the attack I want to see you explode not like on your prom date's belly but <laughs> from your static position. You guys tracking? I want two. I want one. And then I'll brief, I'll, I'll give you another whistle. So take a few steps. Move laterally like five, ten feet. Ready? Look at me, boys. You're going to cover more ground. You're going to do it faster. So now I want you to turn, move, explode, explode. Somebody is trying to shoot you. Get out of their way, cause them to reorient and re-engage. Explode! Now we go slow fast. Explode, explode! All right, quick, quick teaching point here. I'm not gonna tell you, unless the drill requires it, how many rounds to have in your gun. It is a good practice in that of a professional that when you have a chance, tap your magazine off. Unless what you are trying to do is come to slide lock, I got no problem. All right, he's talking, or before you reholster, so you finish the drill, doing a tactical reload. I'm gonna show you guys these. See that? Tactical reload, which is a nice way of saying that you're reloading and retaining the partial magazine. Got it? Also, if it's two and two and you need to reload, make the shot. If you miss 27 times to make one shot, fire the 28 till you hit it. The drill's over when you complete the 
three required number of rounds. What I'm trying to force into your brain, guys, is that we don't always have a flat static target at some predetermined distance. Things move, people move. So, for example, this is contact shooting, right? What sight gear do I need to shoot this target? Three, right. So, I don't need any. Now, could I get a perfect sight picture? Sure. Could I have that number two where I'm kind of wobbly because I didn't take time to get steady? Sure. So here's all the drill is. I'm going to give you a beat. You're going to face this where you can't see the steel. You're going to draw. Fire two. Step out. Listen you under the steel. I'm going to do it again. Ready? Shoot his rubber dummy. Under the steel. Shoot her! Shoot her ready. Come on. I did that in 352 without rushing. So you got all the time in the world. Have you obscured the steel where you're standing? Yeah. Perfect. Shooter ready? Ready. Stand by. Do it again. Do it again. Three, three, four. Very good. Here we go. One more time, 287. Ready? Uh, 295. Step off the line. Who's up? It's a great drill at any distance. You can you can do this by just having a smaller target out there as well. There you go. Got a load to make ready or are you good to go? Load to make ready. Stand by. You guys are ninjas. Ready? Ready. Two. Two or three. Ah. 3399 those misses man those misses gotta do it again now <laughs> I know are the most quiet, the most, not just quiet, 
in the sense like you, for example, but quiet that they're not telling you how badass they are. Some of the dudes that I'm visiting with down here have done unspeakable things, unspeakable. And they don't talk about it because they don't want to think about it. But that's the kind of guy that maybe is not a UFC fighter, maybe isn't the greatest marksman, but he has the mental capacity to go from zero to a hundred in an instant. So now we're talking about these scenarios where you need to go from unaware, because we cannot physically walk around keyed up all, all the time. It will mentally wear you down. This is why police officers in the inner city have a higher instance of alcohol abuse, they have a higher instances of, of uh, insomnia, they have a high instance of uh, uh, suicide. Police officers and first responders in the metropolitan areas keep up constantly, constantly eat out full of adrenaline. Back to the point. These men that are very deadly like that have trained themselves to go from I'm eating a cheeseburger at a barbecue to I am sticking a freaking fork in somebody's eyeball. And then most of them can go right back to the cheeseburger. That's a sick way of describing it, but that's, that is what is deadly. It's not the tool. It is the wielder of the tool that creates that, that deadly edge. And in this society now, we frown on that. What are you, some kind of sicko? You want to hurt people? Not at all. The whole point of this is what? So we can grow up to be old men with gray hair like this and raise grandkids and, and not be a statistic of somebody that got laid out in a Walmart parking lot for, for uh, your wallet. The real work is you programming your brain. I trained for this. I have the response. I understand what I will do when this happens and if that line is crossed, I will do X, Y, and Z and go home, right? So that's, that, this is the part of all of this that really you guys need to soak in and think about and stew about. You can become so proficient with this and be no safer. If you are not willing and able to deploy it and able to recognize a real threat. We talked yesterday about police officers shooting kids with telephones. That happens. That does not need to happen. Uh, accidents always are going to happen. There's not a perfect world. But you need to program, program your brain and work through this stress. And that stress is part of why these things happen. Tunnel vision. This tunnel vision, again, is happening. There's, there's much studies on why this happens. Your body starts pulling blood into the areas it needs to make you as fast and as strong as possible and have as much oxygen. That's why you start doing this. Same thing that happens when you're with a girl for the first time. Remember? And you're like, why is this happening? My stomach feels funny, right? And you start breathing heavy. You're like, I have no idea what he's talking about. I haven't had that experience yet. I hope <laughs> to while. sometime in the next couple of years. But that's real. So again, that's a, that is a you're, it's such a uh, out of normal experience for us that our body dumps some adrenaline, we get that dump, you know, the same responses. So I'm trying to give you things that have happened to you so that you can recognize what's different when it's somebody shooting at you, right? Same adrenaline dump, different process happening in your brain. I remember not being able to hear anything. During sexual intercourse? Oh, no, that's all. <laughs> 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 Why are you crying? That was her on top of me. <laughs> no, I had a situation once where my my wife trains horses. Okay. Train a baby horse, and flipped out, bucked her off. And and she got stomped. Oh wow! And you saw it happen. Yeah, and that was one of the one of the adrenaline dumps. So you your and every ring just went <laughs> right. I was outside of the arena. I remember jumping over the fence and running towards her. And as I was running, thinking, I can't hear anything. Like I would have expected that to hear the horse brain. running off. Yeah, like the horse running. There were other people there yelling. Like I couldn't hear anything. And I just remember, just randomly, like. As I'm running towards her, mm -hmm. and and you know, I, and I, like you said, obviously, I was like, 
all I could see was her laying on the ground. Um, Our so body is saying. programmed to go into this performance mode. I'm going to take every resource and shove it into this part of my hardware to get the optimal performance, either to run like hell or scratch and fight and claw so that I can survive whatever it is. And you in that moment were like, oh my God, my wife's in trouble, and your body compressed time and space and you went to go get her. Which brings us to tachycythia, this next word, big word, tachycythia. Tachycythia is this distortion of time. This is why somebody in one of these scenarios, it looks like eight minutes long, but really it was two seconds. This is like, this is human beings becoming superhuman. Our brains are such complicated computers that we literally can take time. This is just like any of you play with your phones and shoot like high speed, right? And you can slow it down and you see all kinds of cool nuances. Our brain has the ability to take all this information and like in superhero movies, you know, that you can like see bullets flying. We can almost do that. And I believe there's actually human beings that can flip that on consciously. I don't know how to, but I believe that's possible. How does a freaking major leaguer, part of it is training, but a 95 mile an hour ball? You ever stood in front of a ball going that fast? <laughs> you know, it's like, what? What? And part of that is training, timing and such. These guys have trained parts of their brain to pick up things that we can't, normal human beings. Tachycythia can either expand time or slow it down, one or the other. I'm trying to get you. This happens. This is real. Or a car crash that was four seconds long it seemed like it took two and a half minutes. My life flashed before my eyes. This is legitimate stuff. This is what causes what people call that loss of fine motor skills. Your body pulls all that blood in. This is what causes the narrowing of the eyes. This is what causes your digits to get, you know, you're all fumbly, you know. Try to call 911 and your fingers don't work right. The fight, flight, or freeze response. Some people, I told you guys, I have a, a bad startle flinch because of shit that happened to me when I was a kid. <laughs> I go like this all the time. It might just be Matt trying to pet my hair. I suppose it don't. Some people always will take off running. You know, you'll see these videos where like, it might be comical, like somebody plays a prank, right? Like walks in with a rubber snake and the dude ah! and just takes off and sprints. You ever see something like that? Yeah. Where somebody else will stand up and just go eight and start hitting their friend. I just saw one somebody sent me the other day, the husband sleeping on a chair. I thought watching it, this guy was probably a, a vet, and the woman come up and like started with him, his eyes open, and he blasted her right in the face. And he's like, oh my God, and he got up and he's hugging her, and he busted her face. But he was probably sound asleep and like thought something bad was happening. Yeah, he just bashed her right in the face. That's a subconscious response. You know, he's part of it's that he's trained himself, part of it is he's wired that way. Combat breathing. That's not a joke. So we think like, okay, breathing, I breathe, I breathe. How many of you really put any energy into breathing? Most of us breathe too shallow. Most of us hunch over. Our lung capacity is used about a quarter of what's available, which is why once we push ourselves like we did yesterday, we're huffing for air, even I was. But when we learn to use more of our lungs and we oxygenate, two things happen during that, that fight or flight response. One, adding oxygen helps to break that tunnel vision. Your focal, your focal distance will lock onto something. This is part of the reason that you want to shift your gaze a little bit because you'll see the barrel, the guy pointed the gun at me, you'll hear this, and the barrel looked this big. This is, you'll hear this often if you look at, at uh, uh, studies on people shot and they just like that's all they could see was the barrel of the gun look like that that the guy was pointing at you gotta snap out of it get some air into you and fight through that that is a tr trained response which is why i told you guys yesterday we're gonna do that today every time the gun comes out comes back our brain is really what sets us apart from animals our brain is what sets you apart from the kid that 
has a drug problem or the person that doesn't achieve anything. You guys just spending your time doing this says that you're willing to invest something that others aren't, right? We need to take control of how we program our brain. And part of that is just done through how we speak to ourselves, how we view ourselves, how we, how we look at a challenge. Uh, I don't want to step up to the firing line today and really look like an a screw up. Well, that's not a good way to handle it. I'm going to do a good job today. I'm probably going to have some areas where I falter, but I'm going to learn something. I'm going to work through it. Probably a better way to look at it. God, I really hope if I ever find myself in a deadly encounter, I don't myself and, and fail and die. Or, I've trained as best I can. I've invested time, energy, and money. I know I'll rise to the occasion and do my best and hopefully, Lord willing, come home alive from that kind of violence. Even better, I'm not the kind of idiot that walks around. This is talking to yourself. I'm not the kind of idiot that walks around unaware. I pay attention. I am calmly and relaxed, calm and relaxed while aware of my surroundings. When I enter a new space or place, I pay attention to who's in there. I look for things like exits and entrances, right? Not just for your sake. Some people get weird about this, so I gotta sit in the corner, like I just told you. Well, I can walk in calmly and see, okay, these are all good people. You, by watching people's faces, just calmly, you see. That dude's pissed off. I don't know why. It could be a bad day at work. I'm going to just either go somewhere else or sit where I can at least keep an eye on him. You've seen this. You've seen people escalate arguments so you can see it in their face. So just pay attention to these things. It's not hard. The purpose is that we don't get in fights. So when we see that, we move away unless we can't. That's the other thing. So you're on the airplane. I can't just leave. Okay, well now I'm going to just pay attention to this idiot four rows up, and if something happens, I'll involve myself if need be. If not, put my headphones back on, you know? So it's how are we speaking to ourselves? That little voice you guys hear in your head every day? Oh, God, you get up again. So how about, man, I'm beat from yesterday, but I am ready to get some. Who does that? Try to do it. That's how you got to be. My arm hurts. I must have worked out harder than I thought. Oh, it feels great. Literally. That girl's never going to like me. Who says that one? I'm staring right at you so hard. You know, we do these things, though. We program ourselves over and over and over. Why did Tim get the raise? I hate Tim. Tim's a Why didn't I get the raise? I was worth it. How about being honest with yourself about your performance and about your attitude? Because you're the kind of person that somebody like that instead of being happy for him now I see why you didn't get the raise I see why you didn't get the promotion this is a mindset a philosophy winners champions successful people those that prevail in violence for righteous reasons usually all have the same mindset if you take like CEOs presidents of companies you take champions in sports you take guys that are elite military people and stick them all together, they're all gonna have the same philosophy of life. I guarantee it, because I've met and been around these people my whole life. They all will have the same philosophy on how they view themselves and how they view life. And until you start viewing yourself that way, then you always second guess your abilities, you'll always second guess whether or not you're good enough, whether or not you'll rise to the occasion. So this becomes a process, not only here, but in the rest of your life. You know, when you're driving around, are you just listening to some hip hop? Or are you spending some of that time programming your brain? Do you go to bed at night? Are you pissed off about what happened throughout the day? Or are you thinking about how kick ass the next day is going to be and how good you're going to do? This is that I think if parents all did this with their kids, we'd have such a better uh, country, a better world. How many of you had a father or mother that said, like, uh, you better learn how to fix cars, kid, because you ain't going to college and you're never going to be much more than, you know, a, a, a menial a worker or, you know, something like that. Or we grew, grew up around a parent like that. You're stupid. You ever have a mom or dad tell you that? You don't have to answer. But that, that goes deep into our psyche versus you're the smartest boy in the world. Right? believe that when mom and dad tell you that over and over again. 
you can be that same voice to yourself. Am I on that too long? I actually find that to be the most important thing because until we get to the point where we can override that negative thinking, we'll only reach a certain level on, on these kinds of drills. The guy that the guy that can like go up on the deck there and hit all this steel over and over again is the guy that knows he can. You must have the skills to do that, but in order to get that far, you got to believe that you can achieve that. Confident not talking. So the draw stroke from yesterday, we get a master grip, right? We clear the holster, we rotate towards the target, we join, we press out, we take the slack out after we found the site, and we break the shot, we get a subsequent site picture, we come to the locator, we come back to the chest, we thumb check and safely holster. Eventually, instead of 20 steps, it's I'm gonna draw, right? Right now, you're looking at this as if it was all of those steps. You, it, once these things become ingrained in you, and this becomes a philosophy to you, because that's what this is. This is a martial art. This is a, a way that we are looking at. It's not, this is not like a page in a book. All right, I'm going to take that page, but not take this page. If you are going to be successful at this, this is a way of thinking. It's a way of life. So that then becomes this, rather than... Make sense? Who decides that the fight is over with? Me and you are in a knockdown, drag out fight. Weapons, guns, fists. Who says when it's done? The other person. Yes. So I can quit any time. I can tell you to stop. I either make your ass stop or you decide to stop. Because I'm going to stop when you stop. When you're done, either you've dropped your gun and said, I, 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 I'm sorry or you're not any longer a threat, that's when it's done. That's that's it. Everybody's always like, stop, I'm not making stop, I'll fight to the end. No, you, it is, now, if you have come to this point where you need to engage somebody with deadly force, which a firearm is, we're not shooting to kill, we're shooting to stop, right? And we know it stops when we take in that information, which is why we don't snatch our gun in, so we're taking in information, person I just applied deadly force to, where's the gun, where's his hands, hey man, get that gun away from me, somebody call 911, this guy just tried to kill me, I'm going to hold this gun here, tell the cops I'm wearing a red shirt, I am armed, my name's Mickey, I'm just going to stay right here until the cops come here, good, versus him shooting you and shooting you and shooting you and you thinking why isn't he stopping, you, you need to be able to get them to that point. One of my buddies says you got to convince someone. Makes good sense. So that's your job. So that said, handgun rounds, who's got a bullet? These are really, really, especially the hardball stuff we're shooting, really bad at, at stopping human beings. You know, the movies, you think like you're going to fly back, right? Matrix style. Even the best, best. Uh, duty ammo money can buy for pistols is really really ineffective this is why uh, soldiers are not jumping out of airplanes with pistols if he has backup they've got an m4 they've got a 240 right they've got these big weapons that have lots of ammo lots of energy then you even think of like a an m4 why don't we shoot deer with a 223 i don't know if you guys do down here up in illinois you can't because it's ineffective you do? You, with proper bullet placement and such, but we know there's a bigger round, more effective, more damage, more terminal ballistics, more energy. So what these things are good at are punching holes. You start thinking about clothes, armor, things like that, it totally changes things. But they punch holes real well. If this is really not a lot different than this when you think about it, punching a bunch of holes. What stops a human being? Give it to me. Blood loss. What else? Yes. What else? The skeleton. What else? See this word here? Exanguation? 
See that? Hypovolemic shock basically means you bleed out, your blood pressure drops so much that you die. That, that means you, you bled to death. Um, notice I got on the bottom there. This is why we track a target to the ground. Let's think simple physics. You stand up, after sitting for a long period of time, what happens? You're, you're, you get a head rush, which is not really a head rush, it's the opposite. You stand up and blood leaves your head and runs down lower to your body. But you stand up and it drops through you and you're going for a split second. That's what it feels like as you are bleeding to death. Just for that little second when you feel that, if you're ever bleeding out and you feel that, it's like, I'm going to die. Because that blood is leaving your brain. That blood pressure drop, that's what that is. If somebody is bleeding out and they drop to the ground, what happens physically to liquid? If I take this cup and turn it sideways, what happens to all the liquid? My head's this way and I'm bleeding out and, and I'm losing blood. My head, the reason that the reason that our body is designed is with these carotids here pumping all that blood up here just for fighting gravity to move blood up and down. If I lay down, all of a sudden blood can rush right back to my head. Even if I'm going to die in 30 seconds, I get a little more oxygen, which is a little more fuel. Now I'm on the ground and you holstered up. And that, that reanimation happens. That's just with animals. You drop a deer or a coyote or a pig. They run, they hit the deck reoxygenates to the brain, they pick their head up, where's the predator, where's the bad person, where's the, the good guy that tried to stop me and now oh, I'm gonna get this. I'm gonna die, but I'm gonna die kill this person. That's right. That is precisely why as we're training, so you'll see me a lot. I track down to the ground. Some people don't like that. What I don't the goal is not to have if I'm shooting at a target, I know that target's not falling over. I sometimes don't like this. This is the other thing I'll see. Boom, boom, boom. Gun locks back. I'm empty. Why are you pointing an empty gun at an imaginary target on the ground? So the automatic response should be reload, get back on target. At the very least, get that final sight picture. All right. So we got about 30 feet between you. On the beep, you're going to cover that distance. You are going to draw and engage the target. Come back safely to the holster. Make sure you get that subsequent sight picture. Runner ready? Shooter ready. Guess what? That's the most you'll ever get in the real world. Nobody's going to stand and tell you, are you ready? Wait for it. Last shot was at 2-0. Your first shot broke as he was right here. This is 30 foot, not 21 foot. This is just about 30 foot. He was less than one yard from you. Even had you shot him, if he had a knife, come close. If he had a bat, as you're shooting, or, or, pop, 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 right? Next. First shot, 124, 143, elapsed time. Switch it up, bros. As you guys are doing this, are you seeing the problem of, of dealing with the, somebody at distance? Load and make ready. You understanding why this is a sandwich? Why, why distance with a contact or edge weapon does not necessarily mean you are safe? Ready? One four one, first shot on target. You might have to run into gunfire to save your life. If it's that, or go hide in a bathroom stall and be murdered, you gonna fight, or are you gonna try something? Get your ass down. So now you're not just running to stop. Uh, or to run past that, that finish line, he's now got to engage. I'm going to get out of the way. Let's not destroy your uh, the target. 
time doing it, but we'll try it. This will give you guys more time shooting. Why don't we try uh, two to the body, three to the head now. Move off the line of force. And uh, start singing your song. You could even add in like jumping jacks as you're waiting for me, as you're singing. God bless America, land that I love and love her. That was it, huh? That was your fury. That was your death. That was your death struggle to stay living. <laughs> <laughs> Bitch. Swap them out. I think I would have pulled it. Two to the body, three to the head. Two and three. Two and three. <whistles> Woo! God bless America. I don't even hear the singing, man. I don't know the song. You don't know the song? No. How do you not know God bless America? We God live in North Carolina. God bless America. You gotta make it <laughs> Tom bet in half. Matt's just like <laughs> my birthday deal. <laughs> <laughs> because just because there's some distance doesn't mean that there is not a possible threat. That that term Masada Yub calls jeopardy. Are you in jeopardy? And distance can change that, but the weapon type changes that. What else? They go keep charging even after the first first round hit. Say that again to me. So they're going to keep charging even after the first round hits. So. The body momentum is going to keep carrying him in the forward direction. So even if that person gets shot ten times in the chest, if you are Annie Oakley with the pistol and drawn can put ten into the chest, 200 pounds of man meat coming at you full force, 15 miles an hour, it's going to continue, right? You wiped out. How far did you end up traveling? What if there was a brick wall right behind where you were standing? How would it feel if you ran full force into me and there was brick behind me or a vehicle or more people or a stairway? You know, that's legit. You're Beet juice for Frankie. This is martial skills. Martial means war. That's what this is. There's actually some guys back in the 80s created a martial art around the gun. You guys know that? Look it up. Masada Ayub was part of it. And it was basically like you had belts and all that jazz, just like Taekwondo or Kenpo or Aikido. And they, the, the main weapon was the gun, except it was about transitioning from fists to feet to elbows to blades. But the gun was kind of like a centerpiece, like a sword would be a samurai centerpiece. It's not really, never really took off, but now we're seeing more of that, the mixture of combatives, blades. This is like, for civilians, the best time in the history of the U.S. of A. for us to have access to this stuff. Um, like back during World War II, boys had come home and they learned some judo when they were overseas. And people were like, what the hell is going on? They'd walk into a boxing gym and some sailor would throw the boxer on the floor and nobody would seen it. There was no internet. There was no movies. You know, the karate movies came to be in the 60s so back even just when our granddads great granddads were kids you had boxing and just good old-fashioned ass whooping there was none of this other stuff that we have now and then the ability that we have to really train like this timers and all of this jazz and video footage that we can replay we got no excuse no excuse we should all be spartans I brought loincloth for everybody. <laughs> nice. I'm gonna go with. That drill as you were holding that baton, is that not legitimate? 
I mean, how many times is there do we read in the news or see something where somebody has to defend against a gunman? Here's the good thing. Here's the good thing. You guys train way more. Bad thing is there are bad guys that train. The bad thing is there's idiots like me that post social media that show you how to hold a gun and grip it and shoot and draw. I used to not do that. And it was like somebody's posting it, so I might as well post the correctest way I know. But most bad guys can't hit. Most good guys can't hit. Did we talk about the statistics yesterday of police officers and police involved shootings? How often they miss? Did we talk about that? I don't think so. I don't think so. It's in your book. Two out of ten rounds hit in a police-involved shooting. Cop draws and fires, ten rounds, eight of them are not hitting the target. That's a statistic. A lot, to do, a lot ha is happening, though. For one, when we shoot, we're like, I got all my hits. We're not in a fight-or-flight scenario. We are not being shot at. We are not in a squad car. We are not in these situations where we're out here in the open. Which is why I'm doing some of this screwing around. Get a little sweaty, lose some focus, trying to remember the words to a song, laughing, joking. That's that white, yellow, black. The black part for you to imagine, you need to in, 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 uh, invoke some rage. When I say rage, people are like, oh, don't get angry, dude, you know, be the peaceful warrior. It's time to go. You go to that dark, special place where dragons and frickin' swordsmen and unicorns live. That's where you have to be. There's no like, uh, no, it's angry battle axes and I'm gonna chop your head off because I'm going home. You have to be able to summon rage. Righteously though, not my buddy pissed me off so I'm gonna smash his head in. It has to be this person is trying to take my life and I don't want them to. As such, I will use every bit of anger in me righteously to defend my well-being or my families or loved ones or other innocents. Problem I think with most of this police involved shooting is undertrained, a lot of cops and civilians rarely trained. Policemen only have to shoot sometimes 50 rounds in a whole year to qualify and they're hitting a static target. They're not doing any movement, none of this sweaty hot stuff. So what's gonna prepare you better, shooting at a static target or at least running around some, seeing what happens as you're not in a perfect shooting fight. Heart rate gets up, your buddies are watching, a video camera's rolling, you're probably gonna be on Instagram and don't wanna be the one that eats it. You're looking at it now, you're just like, son of a bitch, I'll break you, okay? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Another good thing, out something else that drill does for you is shows you what level of work you just need to have sure. or this close or this close. Mm -hmm. You got to be a whole lot more ready for something to happen. We're going to do a drill in a little bit that uh, is going to incorporate some of that. That's totally 100%. Talking about the police involved shootings, and I don't talk about this to harp on cops. We use the cops because the cases are so documented and investigated. Civilian stuff. If the civilian was justified, there's not huge investigations into like how the shooting occurred. He stopped a bad man, it was justified. I don't care how he did it, he stopped the bad man. When it's an officer, man, they break it down into every little detail so that they can use that for training, good or bad. So what did he do wrong, what did he do right? So that's why we use that. Um, people are like, well, we're not cops. Totally, 100%. But, it's, there's, but they're humans. They're humans exposed to a lot more training than most of us, especially when it comes down to simple things like like the criminal profiling, the pre-fight indicators. Uh, most of them are carrying a weapon outside their body versus something concealed. They have left hand shooting uh, or right, right off hand shooting, single handed shooting. Uh, how many of you guys have seen or been trained to do this as you shoot. Anybody? So there's a couple things happening. One, this is a natural hand for your position, your or natural position for your hand. Two, if you're thinking about just purely mechanics of shooting, what's stronger? This, or if I put a bunch of weight behind me, create a solid block behind my arm. Right? 
this makes you solid. A very easy, thoughtful thing. Can I shoot my hand if it's here? Right? I'm not going to shoot my hand if it's here. Some guys teach to take the gun and cant it inboard slightly. There's several factors to that. There's some really good national champion level shooters that'll teach this, and there's some that'll tell you to do this. If you're shooting at distance, if I take my sight and I go this, like this, up and down is no longer up and down, and left and right is no longer left and right. That becomes a problem. So now what you are used to seeing, you go like this, up and down is now like this, left and right is now like this. Different. Windage and elevation, everything's screwed. I personally hand out arm straight, elbow in. You'll feel the tricep activate, you'll feel your lat muscle and pec activate, and you're locked in good and solid. The one thing about always bringing your off hand, whatever you're not shooting to, to your chest is, what, what, why or what would cause us to have to shoot one hand? Answer. Uh, an injury. An injury. What else? Sure. I'm doing this, or I'm doing. Come on, get up here. Get up here. When I'm doing this, right? This will get really far. You okay? Hard now. So can I do this while I'm holding him? Can I do this after I've taken a shot through my shoulder? or humerus, or elbow, or hand? Maybe, maybe not. So, muzzle awareness. If I draw, and I'm having to shoot like this, I, I don't want to be tied up, having to engage like this, and not know where this hand is. This is a safety mechanism. The point you gotta get to, though, is that you know where your parts are in time and space, because you may not be able to do that. So as we start, we're going to come right here. Target is, I'll show you, watch me at the target. You guys are going to draw. Load and make ready. Seat lock, tug, press check, press out. Elbow is going to come down a little bit. You're going to feel everything activate. You are going to grab onto that trigger. Same press. Reset. Same press. We're going to run through a mag like that. And I want you to think about, is this, if I'm shooting righty, now my stance could change, but what if it can't? If I'm shooting like this, or like this, or like this, and then this arm gets injured, should I, oh, I should have my weight forward now. I'm probably not going to do that. It would, ah, my arm is now injured. I'm going to continue dealing with whatever I have to deal with. You don't always have time to do this foot movement business. Square up. Load and make ready. Didn't bother you, did it? No. Just scared me. I didn't know what you were going to do. So, draw correctly. Rotate till your gun is oriented towards the target. Take that weak hand. Bring it up to your chest. Tighten it up. Press the gun out in front of you. Now, take your elbows, boys, and rotate it in a little bit. Do you feel how your tricep and lats activate? Find the sight. Find the sight. Slack out. Middle of the paper. Middle of the paper. Press. Okay. Shot at a time. Feel the elbow. Now take your arm. Go like this and just cant the pistol a little bit. Cant it out about 20 degrees. So now your elbow can't do that. Try a few shots like that. Holster up. What felt better? What felt worse? Different? Good? Bad? No difference at all? First one felt a lot more controlled. Yeah. Did it? Same. I kind of like the can a little bit better. Yeah, you like the can? I feel like I could get uh, a 
better visual on my sight. Sure. Tilt it a little bit. And that, one of the other things about that, we good left and right, one of the other things about that cant is canting it, this is a more natural position. <laughs> Look where my fist goes. <laughs> This, I had to force myself. Now I would punch like this, it would be really fast to do so, but look how my body wants to move. So that can't, you're working with your body. Boom, boom, boom. That distance, who gives a We go back out now and try to pop that steel from 50, 60 yards, and you will start noticing a difference in how steady you can get. Everybody's body's different, everybody's hands different. Try that. Try that again with another mag. Load and make ready. If you got to load up, get out and tinka, tinka, tinka. Master grip down there. Master grip. Go for it. Nice tight groove. ammunition management as you come and go. Why are we here? For battle. Right. We're here to fight with a gun. This gun is for, for fighting. We are not here to learn target prep, which is a component of the fighting, but it is not the fighting. You need to be proficient in being able to control your muzzle. If you can't do it here with hundreds of yards of safe space, don't plan to do it in the grocery store or the coffee shop or the mall. Don't try to be a hero if you cannot I don't want to say subconscious because you always need to be extremely mindful of this muzzle. This weirds people out. This weirds instructors out like Nick has a loaded gun in his hand and he's facing this way. There's no range outside of a range. There's no safe zone in the mall or the coffee shop or the courthouse or the airport or the parking lot. There's no like that way to safe zone. The bad guy will appear right there with a brick wall behind him. So you must be confident and competent to be able to move around. I think some instructors have taken this too far where they have now placed human students around targets. You've seen these videos, right? Where dudes are like shooting past students and they're like, oh, that's so badass. No, that is completely 1000% ignorant. I don't need to shoot past you. Let's look. Did any of you for the last two days miss the cardboard? Yeah. Completely? Uh, Oh, no. no, nobody missed the cardboard completely. Uh, did anybody miss the headshots completely at the distances we were dealing with? Do I need to stand here to show you that you can hit that? So the theory is, oh, you're inducing another level of stress. <laughs> that. <laughs> I mean, if you want to stand there, go right ahead. You guys are going to start right here. Okay? going to engage rubber dummy with that one round. Don't come up too far. I want you to see what's happening. You engage rubber dummy. Do that slide lock reload because you only are going to start out with an empty mag, right? You've now taken him out of the equation. Fault line, it's as far as you can go. If you guys look through here, come over here. It's tight. There's maybe eight inches to squeeze through there and engage that steel. See it? Did you see it? That's all you get. You hit the bad guy, or the good guy rather, those, those clean targets down there are hostages. So that's all you get. That little, that little hole, it's about 25 yards down, and here's what's gonna happen from there. So from either side, we've created these fault lines. So you are now gonna weave between these and you're gonna engage that steel. Serpentine, pink, pink, two shots on each, pink, pink. Every time you can get a clear sight, take, you're gonna come, contact shoot him. Check this out, come here. If you contact shoot this dummy and don't pay attention, 
Where do your rounds go? Into the hostages. So part of this drill is paying attention. Earmuffs turned off. Fight it out, man. Do what you can. Push yourself. Yeah, I'm a machine. Nice. Get out to the left there and engage that sucker. Remember, these are hostages. Watch your muzzle. Ooh, hostage hit, hostage hit. Good. You guys, don't be afraid to move to a better position. It's better to frickin' move than to hit a good guy. Ineffective, ineffective. Move, 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 move. Come on, close on this bastard. Watch your mu watch your muzzle. Close on him. Get in there. Good, good. Watch the muzzle. Nice. So the point ain't just running and shooting, it's getting hit, it's being cognizant of the muzzle and pushing ourselves past our normal limits. Good job, dude. Ready, Freddy? Ready. Load it up, you ready? Yes, sir. Make it happen. You're out on a jog and you're stopping at the mall to pick up some Cinnabons to bring home on Sunday morning. What the heck? Three bad dudes in the mall with AKs? Some disgruntled ass mentally ill person that showed up at school with a gun, hell bent on hurting kids. What's he gonna do? Damn that heart's pounding. You pull into a school parking lot and hear gunfire, you're worried about your little nieces and nephews. Where are they? There's kids running out of the front of the school screaming. There's people going everywhere. You see no squad cars. Get that gun working! How'd you find me to begin with? Instagram. But like, what were you doing? Were you like, uh, just, hashtag hard what? body, hashtag me. Italian <laughs> stallion? Brett!
What's her name? That's an interesting female name. It is an interesting female name. How do you spell that? I never heard it before in my life. Run! Get down, get down! That's an AK-47 gunman shooting across the parking lot at your church. It's pretty cool that you just, hey, you don't walk up to church with a drawn gun. Load that sucker up. You're all chilled. You're all chilled. Everybody's happy. Look at me for a minute. AK-47 gunman at your church. Ineffective. Ineffective. Hit. Hit him again! Hit him again! Slow down, get them hits! Oh no, there's one inside! There's one inside! Close, close! I'm talking about to your right, Devin. Wow, good hit. Close on him, close on him! Darlene, you know Darlene, sometimes when you're washing, you're cleaning that one thing, that one carport, you kind of see her taking a bath. This is going to a weird spot, don't get all weird. It's like her, so. The RV park's been overrun by terrorists. Brett! Close, get the hit. Do what you gotta do to get the hit, brother. Dreams to remember. You're at that mythical Otis Redding concert. Go ahead. You, you've created a time machine in your weird, weird hippie world. It's 1965. And you're at Otis Redding's concert. Live in Paris. I'm digging it, baby. Threat! Ineffective! Get steady, make it work! Hit! Hit! Yeah! You're in the mall. I'm in the mall. Looking for lingerie. Oh, looking for lingerie. <laughs> for your boyfriend, Steve. Oh, Steve. If you're in the store and you're going through your favorite pair of panties for Steve to wear, and Come you start on. hearing gunfire in the distance, you look and threat! required to get the hit. Nobody told you you had to stand up. Nobody told you that you couldn't move closer. I said start from there. Do whatever you gotta do. You guys try. One of you, who's up? Who's up? <laughs> 